And I now want to cross live to Dubai because I'm going to be joined by Mustafa Alani. He is program director for the Gulf Research Center. Mr. Alani, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I suppose we've seen a new dimension to this story with the emergence of pro Mubarak crowds making a show of force. Are we going to see more bloodshed in Egypt in the coming days? Actually, the major issue here, where the army going to stand uh, after what happened last night? I don't see any chance that the army can maintain its neutrality anymore. The army has to come either in support of the president or in the support of the people in the street. And our guess is that the army is going to move against the president sooner or later. If this sort of bloodshed continues, if the uh, supporter of the president coming again uh, with, with guns in the street, mm. I think the army is going to move and possibly going to uh, participate. Uh, in the remo removal of uh, yeah. President Mubarak sooner or later. And uh, Mr. Alani, just as we're speaking to you, we're actually looking at live pictures of Tahrir Square people milling around. Uh, we can see makeshift barriers up. Uh, this, of course, after projectiles, Molotov cocktails, uh, rocks were being thrown, turning these peaceful protests into uh, effectively a chaotic battle zone. But you're saying that the army will sooner or later come down on the side of Mubarak. Why then were witnesses saying they were standing passively by yesterday as peaceful protesters were being attacked. You see, the army, basically talking about two levels of the army, the, of, the operational people in the okay. street, and you're talking about the high command. Okay. High command might try to get maintain uh, neutrality, but I think the reaction from the officers in the street will basically move on, so they're going to move and support the people and prevent the, the, the supporter of the President Mubarak to use arms and kill more, more protesters. So here you cannot say that there's a, a tight control over the, the behavior of the normal officers who are standing and supporting the people in the street. So this is where they're going, possibly going to see a trigger event from uh, one officer or two in Tahrir uh, Square or somewhere, who are going to open fire uh, and, and stop the, uh, the, the supporter of, of President uh, Mubarak. Uh, and Mr. Alani, if I can just ask you about broader political, economic, financial concerns, the implications of all of this for the region. We've had uh, Yemen's President Ali Abdullah Saleh say that he won't run for re-election in two years' time. Syria's President Bashar al-Assad has talked about reform in his country, King Abdullah of Jordan, wanting to form a new government there. Uh, how vulnerable are other Arab rulers right now? Now, where do you see the greatest risk of another uprising? I think we're witnessing a panic among Arab, uh, Arab uh, governments. Uh, a lot of governments now try to take preemptive action to delegitimize protests that are going to happen in their country. You can see what's happening in, in Yemen, uh, what's happening in, in, uh, in Jordan, what's happening in, in Morocco. Uh, government now have deeply, uh, deep concern about what happened in Egypt. Egypt is not Tunisia. Egypt is a major player in Arab politics. And we have the whole long history that what happened in Egypt have impact, is domino effect on other Arab countries. So we we witnessing a, a government and leadership panicking uh, to take measures to not to, to allow this lesson, uh, what happened in Tunisia and, and in Egypt, to be uh, developed in their own country. All right, Mustafa Alani, thank you very much indeed uh, for your analysis.